when Sherry and I were out of town during the evacuation, I saw a quote in another town uh, by a great philosopher named Winnie the Pooh <laughs> that I said, boy, that will be a helpful quote for us to remember on All Saints Sunday. This is what Winnie the Pooh said. If there ever comes a day when we can't be together, keep me in your heart. I'll stay there forever. And so let us remember that as we give thanks for these saints, many of whom helped us feel and experience God's presence and love. We remember and give thanks for these members of Asbury Memorial. Catherine Argyros, Born in Astoria, Queens, New York in 1948, Catherine strived to live her life helping those in need. A social justice advocate, Catherine was especially concerned about environmental issues and founded the Green Pages Environmental Newspaper in the early 1990s. She also produced and hosted an informational daytime talk show and established the Displaced Homemakers Network. Catherine was not afraid to ask questions or to think outside the box, which helped her grow intellectually and spiritually. She has two daughters, Alexis and Nicole, and five grandchildren who she loved to brag about. Catherine Argyros. Gay Gwinner. Gay was born in Macon, Georgia in 1937. A bright, positive, and intelligent person, Gay was chosen to participate in Jimmy Carter's presidential management intern program. She was then recruited by the United States Corps of Engineers in Savannah, where she worked for many years before retiring. Gay and her husband Maurice were one of the first new couples to join Asbury when the church was struggling in the early 90s. They greatly supported the church financially, spiritually, and through their service. They were social justice oriented and were especially supportive of interfaith efforts. During their later years, Gay and Maurice moved to Macon, but continued to be supportive of Asbury and its ministries, even from a long distance. Gay Gwinner. Philip Hunter. Born in Waycross, Georgia in 1930, Phil's family moved to Savannah where he attended Savannah High School and Armstrong Junior College. He served in the United States Army during the Korean conflict. He then became employed by Liggett and Myers and traveled the world as one of their top salesmen, eventually becoming vice president of government sales. Phil's wife and life partner Betty opened the old tobacco shop and birderies in 1973, which still exists today. Phil is best remembered for his humor, his lively spirit, and stories, which often resonated his love for family, friends, dancing, and music. He loved people, which made him a great ambassador for Asbury, serving as an usher and as my number one advisor. Phil and Betty were married for 62 years. They have two children, Kim and Phil Jr., and a handful of grandchildren, Philip Hunter. Pat Moore. Pat was born in Dallas, Texas in 1943. She married the love of her life, Phil Moore, she worked and managed the books for their family business, the Home Craftsman Company. After Phil's death in 1987, Pat became a real estate mortgage broker. She would eventually move to Savannah to live close to her daughter, Laura Angel, our youth minister, and her grandsons, Haig and Carlson, Carlton. When Pat first arrived at Asbury, she was known as Laura's mother but it didn't take long for her to become known as the dessert lady. If you wanted to find Pat, you knew to look first in the kitchen. She was a fabulous cook, and fortunately she became part of our hospitality team where she supplied many a dish and dessert for us, 
and some of us especially loved her coconut cream pie. Pat also made many a dish for our youth group in their events. Pat Moore. M.B. McDaniel. M.B. was born in Maryville, California in 1954, but moved to Maine when she was young. She served in the United States Armed Forces. She also worked as a factory, on, on a factory assembly line, managed a department store, performed as a singer and dancer, and at her death was serving as a special needs caregiver. Emby sweetened our choir with her true tenor voice and also sewed many a clown with the busy bees. Many of us knew Emby as a strong and courageous person who was able to transgender from being male to female. Another social justice advocate, Emby greatly cared for others, especially those who were in need and those who needed someone to speak up for them. She was a witty, vivacious soul enamored with nature, animals, and flower-filled gardens. It is said that she could coax a lifeless stick to grow. Emby had two daughters and four grandchildren, Emby McDaniel. Jewel Newstratton. Jewel was born in Savannah in 1927 along with her twin sister, Jean Stewart. The Fritz sisters have been longtime members of Asbury. Jewel met her husband, George, down at Tybee, and they had three daughters, Jan, Julie, and Jill, and one son, George III, who attended Asbury while growing up. Jewel was the epitome of a Southern lady and a gracious, caring mother, overseeing and doctoring four rambunctious children who loved the outdoors and who had 20 different types of animals as pets. In fact, Jewel's son, George, used to supply the snakes that we would all go see at the Savannah Science Museum. Jewel helped her children have the most wonderful and memorable childhood. She was hampered by illness in her later years and lived under the wonderful care of her daughter, Julie. The family celebrates Jewel's re recent reuniting with her husband, George, and all of her loved ones in eternity. Jewel Newstratton. Bob Osborne. Bob was born on July 4th, 1932 in Washington, D.C. Can you get any more American than that? He studied pharmacy at George Washington University and served the country as United States Public Health Service Commissioned Officer. After his service, he continued working in pharmaceuticals, becoming the Vice President and Director of Operations for 183 stores. Bob met his wife, Val, at a youth fellowship meeting at a church, and they married in 1954. They had three daughters, Jan, Charlotte, and Elaine, and they have a bevy of grandchildren. After retirement, Bob and Val moved to Savannah at the landings, there, Bob pursued three of his passions, traveling, golf, and bridge. He also joined the Kiwanis Golden K of Skidaway, where he served as its 10th president. At Asbury, Bob will always be known as the Usher. His hospitable presence in the sanctuary is legendary. His presence was so impactful that he would often be the topic at a new members class with people saying that the tall, white-haired usher was so helpful and friendly to them. Bob often said that his main goal is to make everyone feel welcomed and included. Bob Osborne. <laughs> 